Uh, I accepted a commission in 2005 as a medical officer and I have the rank of captain in the Army Reserve. I've been overseas with the Army to East Timor with a battle group and as, as medical officers go, I, I have a reasonable amount of experience and exposure okay. to defence. I began to be become concerned about how defence was treating myself and my colleagues uh, from the beginning, I guess, when I went to Duntrang. And it was, it was made very clear to us that we were not the core business of Duntrang and that they really did not value our expertise. And I'll give you an example. They, they made all of the doctors and all of the nurses, including some quite senior trauma surgeons, sit through about 20 hours of first aid lectures. So we had to sit down and learn how to apply direct pressure to stop bleeding, um, how to deal with simple fractures, uh, the, the sorts of things that we deal with all day, every day, really. And we spent 20 hours in these in, in these stupefying lectures. It was quite insulting for all of the medical and nursing staff to, to be treated like this. Uh-huh. As we went on, uh, it, it became more and more apparent that we weren't valued by defence and I saw my colleagues deserting, uh, not deserting, leaving, resigning from the army. And uh, I became aware that there were very serious, critical shortages in in health personnel. And it uh, has been admitted by defence in various agencies that there is a critical shortage of health support. But they've never acknowledged this in public. And I I understand why they would do that. I I started to uh, make inquiries at my unit at 4CSSB about why these things were going on uh-huh. and I very quickly became the target of uh, a fairly dedicated uh, harassment and uh, I responded to that by making a complaint to the Brigadier of uh, 4 Brigade, the, the Brigadier in charge of Victoria and he flatly refused to investigate my complaints. and. Uh, The complaints have gone to the Chief of Army and they're now with the Chief of the Defence Force, Angus Houston, Uh, and at no stage have they ever investigated the the complaints that I made about unacceptable behaviour directed towards the specialist service officers, the nurses, dentists and doctors. I, I wrote personally to Angus Houston about this matter in 2008 to draw his attention to it because one of the things that happened to me along the way was I was charged with insubordination for pursuing these complaints and in fact I have another eight counts of insubordination and prejudicial conduct to be heard uh, next month arising from my treatment, uh, arising from my complaints about my treatment to my commanding officer and her second in charge. So it can be seen that what we're seeing in the press is only a small part of the problem and no matter how tragic that is for the individuals involved, this actually affects the whole of the ADF's capability and it it is crippling them. So the doctors, dentists and nurses, the people that I work with on a day-to-day basis in defence, they're the ones who are leaving and who are treated quite poorly Uh, and often it's just rudeness or being overlooked for promotion and there's there's no none of this terrible uh, things that we've been hearing about the rapes and the assaults but there's just this low level of denigration and uh, discrimination and harassment uh, which is which has driven them out and now they have a critical shortage of medical officers which is affecting uh, the ADF's ability to conduct operations. It affects mostly the regular forces and my understanding is that the Navy is even worse off than the Army uh, and certainly that's what the the Director of Health in the Navy said that uh, it was a critical shortage which was hampering operations last year. 
in the reserves, we have many uh, doctors, dentists and nurses who are willing to, to help. Uh, but even there, it's difficult because the, 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 our, these professionals are sidelined. They are, the military has gone elsewhere for help. They've gone to the Dutch or the United States for medical help, for medical support in Afghanistan. And they've gone to a civilian provider, Aspen Health Services in East Timor and the Solomons. So now the remaining few dentists, doctors and nurses in the reserves are becoming increasingly disillusioned with defence because our jobs are farmed out to people that they really shouldn't be. Now, these are things that we should be doing. So well, I, I always conclude all of my communications with all of these officers, the Chief of the Defence Force, Brigadier, the Commander of Four Brigade, my commanding officer, whoever it is, I always conclude my letters with, I would like to help you um, sort this out and uh, I've offered my help on every occasion. And the, the feeling I get is, they, is that because I'm a, a captain, who, and that's a, a junior officer, is they think that uh, I must not be smart enough to help them or I'm being a little bit grandiose. And they don't seem to realise that I spend all day, every day, dealing with people with complex problems. And I, I problem solve all day as a doctor. And I'm, I have all of the skills that they need to help. And I have never, ever been asked for my help, uh, even though I have offered it uh, continually since 2008. I think that the most senior ranks, or the very senior ADF officers, are aware, and they're the ones that we see on television, like the Chief of the Defence Force, and he's, he says all the right things. He says that this is a problem and we need to address it. I think the message gets lost further down the chain of command where there are colonels, lieutenant colonels and majors, and maybe they are a little bit resentful of the, the professionals. We, you know, we are on a different pay scale than they are and we, we earn uh, a, a good living in our civil lives. I'm, I'm not sure what the reason is, but I think that at the higher levels they know that there is a problem because they can't provide any health support for their troops. But at the mid-levels, the message doesn't get through or it gets corrupted. I think that the inquiries are a good start, but defence has to implement them. And as in particular for health personnel in the military, I would like to help defence uh, speak to all of the serving specialists and find out what we need to do to retain their services. I don't think that the ADF has the luxury of losing any more doctors, dentists or nurses. And they need to invest some time, money and thought into, into retaining these critical individual assets. Mm -hmm. And I was going before a full general court-martial uh, late last year. Fortunately, my defence barrister managed to convince them that this was inappropriate because court-martials are reserved for people, uh, for offences like rape, murder, um, serious theft, things like, like that. And all I've done is, is write letters to people uh, expressing my concern about their behaviour. I, I haven't uh, been insulting or abusive. Uh, they're just strong letters which complain about the way that I've been treated. So in the end, even defence agreed that that was a bit over the top. Uh, a court-martial could have imprisoned me for six months, I think, and uh, thrown me out of the army. They've downgraded that, and now it's going to be a colonel sitting on alone next month and uh, that's a, a superior summary authority and the, the superior summary authority tribunal can fine me and uh, reprimand me. Um, I think that's and that's likely that that will happen.